Hey Warriors, welcome back. If you're new, welcome to the channel. Today we got a seven drawer dresser we're going to be redoing. We're going to be using some paint that's new to us and some other products that are new to us. Uh, I'm always trying to come up with some new innovative ways. So you'll learn as we learn on this one. And uh, we'll get going by doing some cleaning and prepping. And then we're going to move inside to continue on with painting and uh, other things that we need to do in a little bit warmer area. It's cold in the garage today. But we'll get there, so stick with us. Okay, so one of the things we are going to want to do is we're going to want to fill in these engraved areas. So, we are going to get a start on this with some Dixie Bell mud. So we're going to give this a quick cleaning. Cindy's so using Dawn dish soap and water. We're just going to wipe it down and then rinse it off. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we filled this in, sanded it down. We can still feel these ridges a little bit. A lot of times, um, wood fillers will shrink a bit. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a very thin coat Okay guys, so this is a 320 sandpaper. We just want something very fine. Because all we want to do is get this leveled out. And the Dixie Bell sands very easily. Okay, so since we're now working inside because it's cold in the garage, and I don't even want to spend time out there sanding if I don't have to. I know we took care of a little bit in here, but I want to minimize the sanding inside because of the dust. Um, we are going to try a product that's new to us. It's this uh, liquid sandpaper by Clean Strip. We understand that this will work to degloss and prepare your surface for paint. 
And for the directions, for the directions, I should probably shake it up a little bit. I actually shook it a little while ago, but we'll make sure. And it is foamy, as you can see. And for the directions, put it on your cloth, and you just rub it on the finish. And they say, kind of rub in a circular motion, back and forth, make sure you get everything. And I'm sure this is partly so that you're rubbing into the finish, and that way it's deglossing. Okay, so we're trying a new paint, new to us, anyway, on this piece. It's the bare chalk paint. We're going to give it a shot and see how it works, see how we like it. The color we have is called um, Province Blue. It is not actually a chalk paint color that's on their chart. It is a bare color. and. Here's what the color looks like. It's kind of a bluish, greenish, grayish, something or other that Cindy picked out. She really liked it. I really like it. And this was just shaken up yesterday, so it's already pretty well mixed. Yeah, there's nothing on the bottom. But um, they mixed this color off of their bare color chart for us. Um, it was not one of the stock chalk paint colors. So we are going to give this a shot. See how this works. I got to tell you, I'm liking that color. I think that color is really pretty. So this should be good. So we are going to be doing some rolling and some brushing. So let's get some poured into our pan here and we are going to uh, we line our pans with foil just makes cleanup a lot easier and hopefully I got enough foil in here that we don't spill over <laughs> how we like the spreadability so we want to get under our edge By the way, guys, um, when we're painting, boys, paint feels good. When we're painting, you're going to see that we are almost exclusively use our zebra brushes. Oh, I like the way this paints. This really feels nice. So I'm just gonna, probably don't even need to, but, okay. So let's try a little bit of rolling action and see what happens. And then, you know, we're going to see how it self-levels for us. Now, when I roll, typically you can kind of see if you've got too much paint on there, it kind of bubbles a little bit. 
So I usually roll it, either spread it thinner or roll it until it dries up a little bit. And I kind of like going sideways first just to get that initial spread of paint and then I spread it out going up and down. It really does have good coverage too. For first coat, this is really covering well. And you can hear how I kind of go until I stop hearing that, that noise um, of the wet paint. Once that noise is gone, then so are the bubbles. It means you're not pulling paint up off the surface and creating texture. So when it rolls, and I don't have much pressure on this when I do this, but when I do it, hear how quiet that is? That's what you want. When it gets that quiet, it means you've got your paint spread out thin enough and it's flat. Hear the difference? And once I get it spread out enough, you'll notice that that'll quiet down. See how quiet that got? That's the way you want it. Okay, let's move around to the front. So anyway, these zebra brushes really work well. Um, we use them almost exclusively for everything. Um, if you want to try the zebra brushes, we have a link down in our description where you get them. They're not a real frightfully expensive brush, but boy, they do work well. And we, we use them on almost everything we do. We just really like the way they spread the paint. They spread nice and smooth. They allow you to do it with very little brush strokes versus some of the other brushes. We just, you know, we want a good brush without spending a fortune. And the zebra brushes are an excellent brush without spending anywhere near a fortune. <laughs> so we have a whole bunch of these and we're actually going to be going out and getting more pretty soon here. And this brush, I think, is already six months old. And it still works just fine. So as long as you keep them cleaned off when you're done using them, they last a long time. Six months is a pretty good, for as much as we paint, six months is awesome for a brush to be lasting that long and it's still in this kind of shape. They're very durable. They clean up easy. So anyway, zebra brushes, that's our choice.
So I wanted to show you guys real quick. This is after one coat. And uh, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty impressed. I and mean, look how smooth this finishes. It just really came out nice. So we're gonna go ahead with the second coat here, trying to get it down into the light. I mean, you can see there is no brush marks or anything in here. It just really came out smooth. Anyway, so let's move on with the second coat. Then we can start working on our drawers and getting things ready. Well guys, I apologize for the background noise. This is how they take care of the leaves out here. They just keep mowing back and forth and going over and over and over until they get them all mulched up. So if you hear all the mowers running in the background for a while while we're doing this, you know what that noise is. Okay, so here we go with the second coat. Second coat's gonna be just about the same as the first, I imagine. And we're gonna probably speed this up a little bit, but while we're doing this, and you're watching us put the second coat on, I wanted to answer a few questions and stuff that you guys had in the comments and talk about some of that while you're watching this. So it's something that we'll probably keep doing, so you guys feel so inclined go ahead down to the comments and ask your questions and we try to get to every one of those and answer them in the comments but we're also going to pick some of them that um, we think a lot of you would like to hear about and we'll answer those on our videos as we get them so I've kind of written them down, so if you see me grabbing my piece of paper, <laughs> you'll, you'll know what I'm doing. So, first one, see, there's paper right here. Um, Dawn asked, where do you get your inspiration from for all these wonderful projects? Well, a lot of that actually, Cindy does most of the design decisions. I have input sometimes, <laughs> but Cindy makes most of the decisions on what we're going to do with each piece and I know she is always scanning the internet and she's looking at Pinterest she gets a lot of stuff from there um, a lot of times she says things just come to her but she's constantly looking at a lot of the pictures and stuff that uh, are on Pinterest particularly but she also goes to some of the um, more well-known, I guess, furniture sites like Anthropology and stuff like that. She wants to kind of get an idea of what's current, what's out there, what people are looking at. So, and then a lot of it, she says, just comes to her. So I imagine it's kind of a combination of looking at all these different sites and stuff and sometimes I think she combines um, some of the ideas she gets she'll take a little bit from one thing she saw and maybe combine it with something else she saw which is kind of cool but credit goes to Cindy for our for our designs on what we do that's a big part of what we do and she gets the credit for that. I rarely come up with the creative designs like she does. So, Cindy gets the credit for all of that. And then, uh, G.A. Chic, and I think that's Georgia. Let me know in the comments if that's what it is. Georgia Chic? She says she purchased a drop cloth with an attached tarp from Harbor Freight. And she says, that saved me when I accidentally bumped into a can of paint. The tarp kept the paint from my white oak flooring. And then she said, sneezing while painting furniture is not recommended. Silly allergies. So, here's the tarp I believe that she's talking about. And this is a good idea. 
As a matter of fact, I think we may go out to Harbor Freight and pick one up. We have a Harbor Freight just probably less than a mile from us. So we may just go out there and pick one of those up and use that instead. This drop cloth that we're using right now is, if you can see this, is very, very slippery on the floor because it has like cloth on the back. So it's quite slippery. And then uh, Rebel Refurb said, isn't, isn't the spray paint handle attachment the best? He's talking about the spray can attachment where you can just pull it like a trigger to spray. You'll see us using that whenever we do our um, hardware. And yes, that is the best. It uh, really works well, it saves your finger from a lot of pushing on that spray can. And Sue C. Miller asked where we got these rolling uh, benches from that we sit on. And actually the spray paint handles that we use and the rolling benches both came from our Amazon wish list. You get them on Amazon and we had some um, viewers of ours go to our Amazon wish list. We have a link in the description and they actually purchased these items for us. So that's very appreciated and they're both <laughs> well used and those are just a couple of the several items that we've received from our Amazon wish list. It's always kind of a surprise to get those because we really don't get notified. It just shows up on our doorstep which is a lot of fun. Okay, so working in the house, we generally have to do things a little bit different. And sometimes even our order of the way we do things is a little different. Who knows, we haven't even really started on the drawers yet. And this will probably become obvious as we go. This is a Dixie Bell satin clear coat. And we are going to be using this on the piece. But one of the things we want to do is I want to go ahead and clear coat the front. As I said, things are a little bit different in the house. It helps that we can paint the drawers, slid into the cabinet. So, we're gonna get the back of this cabinet ready to go. I should say the front of the cabinet. By putting our Dixie Bell clear coat on here, then we'll work on the drawers, and we get the drawers in, and all this will already be done. Then we can go ahead, once the drawers are done, and we can do our clear coat on the rest of it. Okay, so we're going to be using the Krylon Metallic Gold Leaf for spraying the hardware.
Okay, so we're gonna top coat. And we're not top coating with butter. <laughs> top coating with Dixie Bell clear coat satin. Okay, so the top turned out to be just a little bit kind of blotchy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just do a light sand. This is a, is a 320 paper wrapped around a 320 sponge just because it makes it easier. Um, so I'm gonna sand this down and then I'm gonna do gator hide on top. And then we also noticed there's some blotchy spots on the drawers and sides. And Jim's going to hit that again with the um, Dixie Bell satin. Okay everyone, so we're finishing up the hardware. That means it's almost time for the final reveal. But I wanted to mention before we go that this coming Friday, the day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday, we are having a cozy winter furniture flip challenge, which is being hosted by Flipping Drawers. And there's gonna be 20 plus YouTubers all flipping furniture that are gonna be involved. It's gonna be exciting time. And we're gonna have a playlist for all the different YouTubers that are involved. So, hope you guys join us for that. Watch for that on Friday. If you hit the subscribe button, hit that bell button, and hit notifications. When we post our video, you'll be notified and you'll be able to get to the playlist through our video. So, appreciate you guys. And as always, have a flippin' awesome day. <laughs>